Welcome to this ninth lecture in the first part, which is on client-side testing and debugging. Uh, and overall, we talk about quality assurance. So it's not only testing and debugging, it could also be other techniques. Now, um, the ones who have taken the software engineering course, so that's, that should be the software engineering students, uh, they will already know the first part of this because I'll essentially repeat uh, a bit of the theory around testing levels, what kind of testing types there are and so on. And most of this I cover as well in the software engineering course. So it's a bit of a repetition, but that's fine. Um, this is to give a, a background on how does all of this actually work together? Uh, what kind of testing can and should you do? And then we dive into the later parts of this module. We dive into the practical stuff, mainly focusing on JavaScript. Um, we look at unit testing in detail. So that's the biggest part we'll do in this course. We look a bit at debugging. Uh, and then I'll show a bit of system and acceptance test uh, and maybe linting if there's time. If not, we do that in the later testing lectures. Uh, the learning outcomes are, again, uh, it still has to do with developing client-side applications. Uh, additionally, there's a bit on, on web application testing. You should be able to discuss that and maybe contrast the different techniques. You should be able to debug basic web applications. Um, and then it goes into the larger learning outcomes, saying that you should be able to analyze source code for errors, improve existing web application code, and so on. Now, testing is not really covered in the course book, so it's not uh, in the literature references. The first uh, reference is just on the testing level, so this first part of the lecture. Uh, the second one is done a bit on G JavaScript debugging, how do you debug? Uh, similar, the third one is how do you do that in Google Chrome? Uh, and four to eight are just links to tools, so uh, if you're interested in using them, you can do that. Uh, but there's of course, a bit of documentation, for example, in Mocha and Chai, which are the tools we use for unit testing. Uh, so that could be interesting. Now, uh, if I explain testing, I first have to go into how we develop software. Uh, and I'll just do that very quickly. But essentially, what we used to do in the, well, for the last 40, 50 years is the so-called waterfall process, where you would start uh, figuring out what the requirements are for your product, what is it you need to develop, what is it the customer needs. Uh, then you would build an architecture, which is sort of the high-level picture of the whole thing. Then you would go into coding, and that's really what you have all been uh, doing most of the time so far in your university career. Um, and then you would do the same with testing. Uh, going back up, basically. You would test the code that you have just written. You would test it on a larger level when you put multiple pieces together. And finally, you would test the entire system. Nowadays, there's a lot of talk about agile development. So instead of doing this old fashioned uh, V model here or the waterfall, we do everything in small iterations. Um, so you only code and you test for two weeks and then you should have something that uh, is functional. Now, the idea is a bit that you don't need that much requirements in architecture. Uh, the reality is a bit different. This is sort of a fairy tale. You need all of these things, uh, but they're, they're not really sequential phases. So it's not like you sit down for two months and, and write requirements, but you just do that quicker. Uh, and the same goes for the testing. So just because you don't have a requirements phase doesn't mean that you don't do system testing. It just means that you do it more regularly on a two week basis. And the reason for testing at different levels is basically the costs of fixing an error. And this is just a, it's just a sketch. So those numbers are not appropriate. Uh, but you usually say that if you find it, uh, a bug in your development, so if you, while you're coding, you find a problem, it's reasonably easy to fix it. Uh, if you have already put your, your software together into multiple modules, pieces that, that kind of work with each other, it's much more expensive and that continues. In the worst case, you find a bug when the product is deployed, it's running, uh, and then it's much, much more expensive. So the, the main message here is the later you find your bugs, the worse it is. Uh, and that's just a cost. But of course, this also has to do with reputation. So if uh, you find the bug during deployment, it means that maybe your customer or your client, your end user, 
has seen it already or has is actually the person that has found it and it might not be good for you. Uh, so ideally to, to test early is good because then you might be able to find bugs during development. Now we can do testing at very different levels as I already discussed. You can do it at unit integration uh, system level uh, and that basically has to do with how much, how many pieces work together. Uh, so we have unit testing and that's what we'll do mainly in this course, but you test a single unit of your program. And that usually means functions. So you have 20 functions and for each of them you write individual tests. Uh, and a test in software testing means you call the function with a certain input, like a parameter, and then you define what should come back depending on what you uh, put in. So, and you can do that in, in essentially two different ways. You can do the success case. You, you put something in and you specify what should come back if you have used the function properly. Uh, and you have so-called called error cases. You put something into the function that is maybe not valid. Uh, for example, the function wants to have a number and you put a string in instead. So then the function, if you have written it properly, should not kind of crash the program, but it should maybe re return an error message. Uh, that's an error case. So these are the things we typically do. Uh, and as you already see, there are multiple cases. So if you test one function, you can have a lot of different test cases. The cool thing for, uh, for unit testing, and that's why it's so incredibly uh, popular, is it's very easy to automate. So there are lots of tools that uh, you, write, you write the tests in, in code. In our case, that will be JavaScript. Uh, and then you can automatically run them. And the great thing is you can do that all the time. Whenever you uh, check in something new into your version control system, for example, you can run these. Um, and just so you remember, this is exactly what we would like to have because it means during development, we already get feedback on what works and what doesn't. So it might be much, much easier than finding those things later. Uh, so we'll focus a lot of unit testing and uh, not so much on the other things. I'll just show tools for that. The next step is called integration testing. That's basically when you put several things together. For example, uh, if you remember the JavaScript lectures, I, I had some function that would call another function and that would call another function. That would be an integration test if I test all of these things together. Uh, or if I have multiple JavaScript libraries that somehow inter uh, interact with each other. So these are typically more complex scenarios already. Uh, it's not just a function, it's something it's more of a use case, something that happens. And then the last step is system testing. That's the entire system, everything you need together. Um, and that's really use cases from the user perspective. So for example, you might want to test the login in Gmail. So you test the entire procedure from opening the website, entering your name, entering your password, pressing login uh, and checking whether this works properly. So the test cases in system testing should cover something that is somehow a real life scenario. Uh, this is really difficult because this includes the entire system. So it's the user interface, like the HTML code, for example, it's the JavaScript client side code, it's the database, it's the backend code. It might also be the hardware, is your server working correctly and so on. So it's a lot of different pieces that can break. Uh, and if you want to automate this, it's actually not that easy. And then finally, we have something that's called acceptance testing. That's very similar to system testing. We test the entire system, but it's sort of from a customer perspective. Uh, so in the past, what you did in acceptance testing where you went through the requirements that you had written down and you checked each of them. Uh, but it basically has to do with the functionality that, that the end user would really see in the end. Uh, in system testing, you might test stuff that is not really uh, concerned with kind of visible functionality, it's sort of things in the back. Um, this is even harder to automate for the same reasons as system testing, but additionally, you also somehow have to include the customer. Uh, so you need to, and the customer is usually not a programmer, so they might not be able to write your acceptance test cases. Uh, so basically, uh, the higher we go up on the hierarchy, the more of the system we test uh, and the harder it gets to automate. Down here, we have small tests for small pieces of our code and they're very easy to automate. So we will focus a lot on this.
Then there are other ways of looking at this. So far, I've, I've kind of looked at the levels, the, the abstraction of our system. Uh, you can also look at testing types. So you can test UI, you can test user experience, uh, you can do so-called functional testing, testing your functional code. You can test the performance, how quick is the system, and so on. So these are kind of different concerns, different quality attributes that you might want to uh, test. And of course, if you, for example, do performance testing, what you do is you execute some code and you measure how long does it take until I get an answer. For example, how long does the answer to my HTTP request take? And finally, uh, there is also a question about how do we actually test? We can automate testing, automate testing. Uh, we have manual testing, very common still. We have something that's called exploratory testing where you don't have a defined test case, but you basically explore uh, like a user clicking around in a website, for example. Uh, we have one thing that's very important, that's regression testing. Uh, that basically means that whenever you find a bug, in your system, you write a test that would reproduce the bug, something that would cause it, uh, and then you fix it. So for example, let's say I have a website, I have to enter a username, I have to press login, uh, and I figure out at some point if I leave the username field empty and I press the button, then the system crashes. Uh, so then I would write a test that would exactly reproduce this behavior. I would uh, keep the input field empty, press the button, and then have a, a check that the system is still running. Uh, so basically, you then have a test that if this bug ever happens again, we will automatically find it. Uh, and the reason we do this is that quite often bugs disappear, you fix them, and then later they come back. Uh, so if you already have a test that checks automatically for these bugs, you will directly figure out when it's coming back, basically. And there are other things, mutation testing, fast testing, they are uh, more advanced and we don't go much into that. Uh, I will, most of these techniques I will not describe really, uh, and it's also not very precise. You can, you can classify this in a much better way. But the important thing is there are so many different testing areas uh, and this is really a lot to learn. Uh, and talking about that, if you're a good tester, that's a really, really good thing on your CV. So. Uh, usually that means you're also a very good programmer because you understand how to test the system in a good way. Uh, if you want to know more about this, there's an entire course on software testing, so I don't have to cover that here. One more thing that we'll cover is different practices. Uh, what you did in the old times was you wrote your system, you wrote your code, and then you did all the testing. Uh, either you did it manually by just spending three weeks and actually clicking around, for example, in your website. Uh, or a bit more modern, you used to write automate test. Uh, but that was done after the uh, actual coding. And a reaction to that was to say we do test-driven development instead. Uh, we write the tests before we write the code. Uh, and the good thing about that is, that first of all, you make sure that you actually do write your tests. It's not like, oh, okay, now we're out of time, so we just skip it. Uh, it also forces you to think about the problem really uh, because one of the issues is when you write your tests after your code you often just write tests for exactly the, uh, the function that you have written not how it should be tested uh, but it's uh, maybe a bit advanced we'll do more of that in the software engineering course and there are two more things that I want to mention because they often come up in the web context. You might run across them. One is called BDD, Behavior Driven Development. Uh, that's an evolution of test driven development. So you write your tests before you write the code. Uh, but additionally, the guys in BDD use a specific format for the tests. Uh, so they basically have this given when then format. Uh, that's all I'll mention about it. But the testing tool we use has a similar structure. So it says, okay, given that I call a function, when I get the return value, then something should be true. Uh, and you'll see more of this. And similar, there is something that's called acceptance test-driven development. It's the same idea as test-driven development, but it's for acceptance testing. So the idea is the customer actually writes an acceptance test that is automated, and then you start writing the actual code. Uh, and then once the test passes, you know that the, the acceptance criteria are uh, passed. The customer is happy, basically. Now I've thrown all of these words at you. Um, 
And you'll figure out when you start working that there is quite a, quite a variety in industry how this is used. Uh, so unit testing, the, the lowest level of it is standard, and that's why we do it in this course. Uh, we also, you will encounter this in different courses. We will do it in software engineering again. You will do it if you take the testing course, um, just because this is not very easy. You have to learn this, uh, but it's also standard. So when you go to industry, people expect that you know what unit testing is and how to do it. Uh, it's very common. Regression testing is also very common, uh, often in combination. So you basically, when you find a bug, you write an automated unit test that reproduces it. All the rest I've shown you varies a lot. Um, some companies really don't do much more than some basic unit testing. I've seen companies that do everything that you can do, essentially. Um, the big companies, of course, are very good at this. Uh, Facebook is known to be very good at testing automated testing, uh, but it also depends on what kind of company do you have? What kind of products do they work with? Uh, is it a information system that no one cares about? Or is it a, a, I don't know, an airplane that might crash? So of course this happens. Uh, there are different dimensions to this. And again, this is something that becomes much more important in the software engineering course for now. We'll just skip that. Now, practically, what does this mean for our course? We have so far covered three things, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and the question is, how do we test this? Um, we would like to test different things, but we'll essentially focus on JavaScript for multiple reasons. Um, we will also do a little bit of debugging because that's quite useful. One important thing is, uh, and I learned that much more last year in this course, testing is really difficult for a lot of people to understand uh, because it, it has a slightly different mindset than regular programming. Um, and we'll come back to that. But in testing, you essentially always try to write a test case that's very concrete. It tests one specific thing uh, so that when, you fa when the test fails, you know exactly what went wrong. Uh, Programming in general is a bit different because you often try to solve a problem very general. So it should work for all kinds of inputs, for example. Uh, so testing is, is slightly different. You'll see that. And in this course, I'll just show you a selection of techniques. Uh, I'll just show two tools or three tools actually for system and acceptance testing, just so you have seen them that whatever you have the need to use something like that, you might remember them. Uh, We'll do unit testing or integration testing with Mocha and Chai. There we actually do a bit of coding. Um, and I'm not saying anywhere that this is anyhow the best selection. But generally you will see that, that the principles are all the same. So whether I replace uh, Mocha and Chai, these two frameworks, with something else really doesn't matter. It's always the same principle, especially unit testing. Uh, even if you change programming language, usually it's exactly the same kind of thinking. Um, so there's not much tricky uh, stuff there. Now, what do we test? Uh, in HTML, what we have done so far is we have validated. So we have checked, is the code conformant to the HTML standard? Uh, and this is not really testing. It's just making sure that you follow conventions so that you prevent errors later on. Uh, as I said in the very beginning, if, if your HTML is faulty, it might lead to errors, for example, when you do scripting. Um, what else can you do? Well, you cannot actually do that much. You can, you can check that certain things exist. So you can have tools that say, okay, when I load the page, the image should be in the upper left corner. Uh, you can check that HTML functionality works, like the links. When you click on it, it actually gets you somewhere. Um, but really, it mainly makes sense in combination with uh, CSS and JavaScript. So we're talking about system testing. When you test your entire web application, of course, there is some HTML involved, uh, but you do not typically test the HTML code separately. For CSS, that's exactly the same thing. So you can somehow check that things look right, uh, that the responsive design works, so you resize. Uh, that's actually a bit of functional testing. You can do those things. But again, we generally want to do system testing. We want to combine the things with, with functionality with JavaScript. Um, so that's why I don't show much on this. Finally, we have JavaScript, and here you can really do everything. Uh, you can do unit tests, test single functions in your JavaScript code. You can put things together. You can test multiple functions uh, that work together. Uh, and of course, you can do system testing <coughs> and also include other things. 
And this is also great because it's really automatable. So you can have all of this automated that you do not need to do the testing manually. Uh, so what I've shown you in this first part is just a lots of options on how to do testing, when to do testing, what to include. Uh, and the message is basically you can never test enough. Uh, most companies will tell you, yes, we would like to do more testing. We just don't have more time. Uh, so that's often the problem. But there is never a point in time where you say, okay, we have tested enough. It's really hard to do that. Uh, in the next part, we'll start pretty basic. We'll just do debugging. Uh, Debugging means, as the name suggests, we find the bug and remove it. Uh, and that assumes that we have actually found the bug. We know something doesn't work, but we don't know exactly why or where, uh, and we try to find it. So that's what we do in debugging. And then we go into the other, accept uh, the other testing techniques. 